Hey, where's MJ? Hi, I'm Katrina Matusik with Suncast Entertainment. Our film here this year at the GI Film Festival is Extraction. And I'm so excited that we got to be here, but the big thing that I wanted to say was that the filmmakers that came were a wonderful group of filmmakers, and I was able to get to know them because the way that the GI Film Festival was put together was amazing. Brandon and Laura and all the sponsors and all the volunteers working together made an incredible atmosphere for us to be able to meet and bond with each other. I've been to so many film festivals where, you know, there's a couple little clicks here and there, but there are so many of us that bonded in a way of supportive, behavior and um, just really enjoying being with each other and we want to follow each other's careers and help foster each other's careers and we realized as we were here that the reason it was so easy to be supportive of each other is because our mission in our films was to be supportive of those who serve our country and I would like to encourage anybody who is creating films to look at our own neighborhood, look at the people who are veterans, look at those who are their families, and think of what stories you can create and submit them to the GI Film Festival. And if you're not a filmmaker, then see how you can support the GI Film Festival because it supports our troops. And we have had a fabulous time and it is like a family reunion, like Laura said. Oh look, more filmmakers, come here guys. We, no, we're doing, we're doing an interview thing. Wait, wait, filmmakers that we have bonded with. We'll, we'll and we're all pictures. taking pictures together. <laughs> it's paparazzi time. Yay! Yay! Okay, thank you to everybody and thank you GI Film Festival for making it all possible. I'm here with Marco Santiago, a filmmaker who premiered his uh, short film Extraction here at the GI Film Festival. Marco, how are you? Good, good. Thanks a lot. I got a question for you. Sure. I was wondering, uh, what was it like, the experience of being here at the festival? Uh, it was a good experience, great festival. Very proud to be representing um, uh, myself and uh, my producer Katrina, the film Extraction, uh, at this particular film festival to honor our veterans uh, who uh, put their lives out on the line and uh, receive very little in reward. And I think this film festival does a really good job in um, uh, showing the appreciation that we have for our, our, uh, our veterans. And do you think that your film was uh, well received? Do you think that uh, the audience got the message that you were that, uh, trying to get across? Uh, I thought uh, we did a pretty good job with the film. I thought uh, for the um, the theme that we were trying to strike a tone for, the a female warrior type, I thought it was pretty well received. I don't think there are enough female uh, combatants that are represented in, in dramatic or narrative forms in cinema. Uh, so Nicholas, what has this experience been like? It's been amazing. It's been fun, uh, enjoyable, a great people, awesome film festival, uh, complete support for the filmmakers. It was um, absolutely amazing. Couldn't ask for a better film festival. Do you feel support by your fellow filmmakers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel intimidated by the kicking ass woman? For sure. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the name of my short film was Verdict. And your name? Your name? Nicholas Mezzanotto. Double Z, double N, double T. And some other vowels in between. <laughs> hey, Chris, you've got a very interesting story about making a film and then becoming the main actor in it. Tell me about it. Well, it happened actually very serendipitously. I was casting my first project in film school, and I wanted a real combat veteran to play the role because I felt that a, uh, an actual combat veteran would bring a certain authenticity uh, that a non-combat uh, veteran would. And I couldn't find any actors who were actual combat veterans. So at the last minute, I decided to do it myself. And it turned out to be a great form of catharsis for me. So I kept doing it. And this culminated in my uh, project, Journey Home, which is being screened here at the GI Film Festival. When did you decide that you wanted to, number one, go into film school, and number two, make a movie about being a veteran? Uh, well, you know, when I came back from Iraq, I wanted to do a film about that journey home and what it's like to come back from that experience and reintegrate back into civilian society. So, but why do you think it's so important to show and demonstrate what it's like as an actual war veteran coming home from Iraq or from a tour of duty? You know, I think it's, it's really important to tell these stories because, uh, you know, you, 
the sacrifices that a lot of these men and women are making are just phenomenal. You know, we toured Walter Reed Hospital the other day, and it was, you know, it made me even more proud to wear the uniform, seeing these wounded soldiers and these wounded Marines, triple amputees, you know, with TBI, and yet they're still just carrying on. They're, um, they're just, you know, they're motivated. They're just, they're not letting the fact that they are so severely wounded stop them. And it, it's just, they inspired me. And even as a combat veteran, they gave me more perspective of what it's like to, you know, to, just to serve. And it's just, I, I can't, I can't tell you enough how proud I am uh, to, you know, to serve when I, when I see just how great these men and women are. Well, that's a huge accomplishment for you to have your film here. What's next? Are you going to continue down this path of filmmaking or maybe the acting bug get you a little bit and that's going to be the path you're going to go down? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stories that I'd like to tell and so I'd like to continue uh, making films and I'd like to c promote filmmaking and acting to other veterans as a form of catharsis. So I'd like to pursue being in front of camera as well. Thank you for your service and congratulations on being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Where's MJ, you ask? Well, tonight she's at the 2011 GI Film Festival on the red carpet premiere of Flag of My Father. We're here with the director, Rodney Ray. Rodney, why are you here tonight? Man, we're here to watch Flag of My Father on the big screen at the Navy Memorial, which is a big thing for me because I'm a Navy veteran. So I'm so excited about the film showing in here on the screen. Fantastic. What's one of the things that inspired you to write this movie? Well, one of the, it's, it's kind of a long story, but the, the whole concept of the flag, my dad's a World War II veteran. He's 88 years old. He's still in great health. But my mom had already passed away, and I went to a funeral and saw the presentation of a flag. And when they did, uh, it was a friend of mine's dad, and his mom had already passed away as well. When they presented the flag, they didn't know who to give it to. And basically, six, six sets of hands reached to grab that flag. I realized that was going to play out in my life one day since my mom was already passed away. And I also realized that I probably wouldn't be the one to get the flag because I'm the youngest. And, but I realized I wanted it for a, 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 you know, maybe, a, maybe a higher reason than my siblings, and that's because I'm a veteran as well. And so me and my dad share that special connection. You'll see that reflection in the movie, A Flag of My Father. Fantastic. Yeah. This is your first time here at the GA Film Festival? Yes, it is the first time, and they've had some great films. Everything we've watched has been quality. And really excited. Actually, we have two films in. We have a documentary called uh, We Call Them Heroes that's airing on Sunday at 3 o'clock here. And it's a, it's a documentary about Vietnam veterans. So we're excited about that one as well. We were very lucky to get chosen, and we feel honored to even be here amongst all these great filmmakers. What's going through your mind? I'm getting kind of excited for you seeing all these other movies being screened, knowing that you're about to, because that's, it's really tough to get into any, any screening, let alone the GI Film Festival here in D.C. It's uh, about three wounded Marines. It's their story of how they were wounded and their struggles coming back and what they're doing now. Where did the idea for this film come from? Actually, Sebastian uh, came across it. He did a film at our school and won the school film festival. And uh, we both uh, looked at each other and said, you want to do it again? And we ended up uh, winning the next year, got Best Documentary and Audience Choice Award. So we're here with our film, hoping that everybody enjoys it as much as our student body did. Well, it sounds like it's already been pretty successful. Uh, to a point, yeah, I hope so. Hi, we're here at the U.S. Navy Memorial with the GI Film Festival. Tonight we've got Tyler Elliott, and his film Hooligans at War is going to be on tomorrow. Tyler, please tell us a little bit about your film. Well, Hooligans at War is a documentary feature uh, that chronicles the uh, everyday lives and operations of the men of Hooligan Platoon in eastern Afghanistan. That's fantastic. Uh, is there places where people could find some more information about your movie? Yeah, if you want to find out some more information or just watch the trailer, even buy a DVD, you can go to www.hooligansatwar.com. Yes, MJ. This will be, this will be, yes. I did two in Iraq, two in the Pacific, and I went to uh, East Af or West Africa, Niger. I'm going back now as a Marine to be a security detachment for humanitarian mission. And it was, a, it was a privilege to do that. And then next year, I'm hoping to be in Afghanistan, too. Um, you keep working, you know. You, you, you. I see it completely different. When I see the Iraqi children, the Afghanistan children, it is me running barefooted in Africa without no shoes, no clothes. So I have to do something, you know, and that's, I, I hope I'm doing the right thing, you know. Thank you very much, MJ. <laughs> you know, my personally, my sister is an Army veteran. My brother is an Army veteran, and my younger sister is in the Air Force. She's, She's on her second tour of duty. She's in Kuwait right now as we speak, presently. Yes. 
from a family of service and sacrifice because we believe this country has given us everything and we must give something back to it. Thank you very much. Hi, we're here at the U.S. Navy Memorial with director Jonathan English, and we just premiered his new movie, Ironclad, tonight in D.C. It opens in theaters July 8th. It seemed to us um, the everything that the GI Film Festival is about and stands for, and the wounded veterans and, you know, wartime and military experiences was a great parallel for a film basically about the, those experiences a thousand years ago in the 13th century. You know, Ironclad is about the battle of a castle in the 13th century. It's an absolutely fantastic movie. I did really enjoy it. What is it that you feel like that sets your movie apart, that makes it unique from some of those other movies that are out there? Um, it's set in the 13th century. <laughs> um, it's got a castle. I try to make the film as authentic to the period as possible. That was one of the key driving visions that I had for the film, and uh, it was an, a an aspect of the material that I was very, very interested in. Not the, you know, there's many historical action adventure films that we all probably love and enjoy, uh, either for their historical detail or for their, you know, entertainment value. I didn't, I'd never felt that there had been a movie about a castle that really showed you what it was like to be trapped inside a castle during a siege and that shows you that makes you feel the claustrophobia of that the fear of it the you know all of the adrenaline and the, the terror of being you know stuck inside a castle during a siege that goes on for many many weeks this particular siege lasted for nine months in real life it's nationwide july 8th and i hope you all your viewers will get a chance to go and see it we're here with Rick Benatar at the GI Film Festival. We've just all seen Ironclad. Uh, Mr. Benatar, it was incredibly graphic. Uh, why were those choices made when you were making this film? Uh, I think we, we, I agree, they were very graphic. And I think that what we wanted to do with the film was uh, really show the viewer what it was like to be in a medieval battle in the sense that we grew up on films like Braveheart and of course Saving Private Ryan was a huge influence. and. Um, that film we thought was so effective because when they raid the beach you really feel like you're there with them and so what we wanted to do is put the viewer in the middle of a battle and show them what it was like to fight with these types of horrible weapons and just the brutality of the era and and how how ridiculously ruthless everyone was in that day and age is something that we thought was really important so we didn't want to just go there because the blood was so uh you know fulfilling to us we wanted to go there because uh we wanted to put the viewer in the middle of it you know, it's just an honor to show it to the to the wounded warriors, especially which are are, are true are the true heroes here. Um, it's amazing, and for us to just be these goofy filmmakers to come to town and say, "Hey, look at our movie! Aren't we cool?" It's not. We're not cool. You guys are cool. They're amazing, and so just to come to D.C. and and uh, and be involved with this is really special. A film about a young marine coming home and uh, sort of exploring the stories of what happens after the parades and after the heroes welcome. Um, so what's that process of coming home? Uh, and that's sort of what we try to explore in the, in the short film. I feel very honored and, and, and really privileged to, uh, we just received the uh, Best Short Film uh, Award, Best Short Narrative Film Award uh, from the GI Film Festival, which is really, really cool. Uh, and as a civilian, to, uh, to have my film honored uh, by, by such a, a great festival um, focused on military issues uh, is a real, real honor uh, for me, and as well as for the whole cast and crew of the film. I'm an Army combat veteran and filmmaker, and I have the honor of interviewing a fellow Army combat veteran and filmmaker. This is Nicholas. Since I don't want to butch his name, I'm going to let him introduce himself. <laughs> Nicholas Mezzanotto. Mezzanotto. So Nick, on a serious note, uh, I saw your film. It was amazing. Thank you. Uh, I mean, from one veteran to another, I think you really captured uh, a lot in that film. It was impressive, and I understand it was your first film. Is that right? Yeah, first, first one right off the bat. Um, and a quick bio on you, You're, you've fought with the 101st Airborne Division in Iraq, correct? Yeah, yeah. Southern cool. Iraq, yeah. So why, why don't you give us, uh, uh, you know, the Reader's Digest version of that. Uh, uh, of my tour? <laughs> the beauty of uh, film is you can edit. Can we do another take? <laughs> uh, the GI Film Festival is the best film festival that I have ever been to. And I mean, 
this is my first time here, but I'm amazed at all the work, the hard work, the volunteer, the host, the people. This is the best film festival there is in America. I am uh, Martin Milo and I made the movie called Goodbye 09 that has uh, been nominated uh, here at the GI Film Festival. And I'm looking for a job, so Ryan Seacrest, you better watch out. Hey, where's MJ?